Hi everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to form Jacob's Ladders in both knitting and crochet. A Jacob's Ladder is a series of loops like this that are then chained together to form a pretty braid like this. You can get your series of loops in a couple of different ways. On this bag that I'm working on, every right side round, so every alternate round, I just did a chain seven in between my stitches. So here I have a single crochet, a chain seven, and a single crochet. And that's how I made my loops, it was a chain seven. In between those loops, um, on the wrong side rounds, I just did a chain two for the corner. Those chain twos are gonna get hidden behind the ladder when we make the ladder. What you do behind it isn't really important. It was just to get across it um, and to keep that corner intact. So that's one way to do it is you can do chain loops and you can do seven, nine, 12, 200, whatever you want, depending on how big you want your links in your chain to be, okay? So that's one way, that's a vertical ladder. You can also do a horizontal ladder. Here I have, I did one row of just single crochet just to get like a foundation in there. And then I have this row of quad trebles. And quad trebles are um, five yarn overs. And then you finish the stitch, you know, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So these are quad treble stitches, really tall stitches. And again, you can do as tall of stitches as you want, depending on how much of a loop you want, right? When we form these into loops, you know, you pinch them together like this and they form a loop, right? So these are actually kind of tiny loops compared to these ones. It'll make a smaller ladder. Now down here, here I've done a quad treble in every stitch. So there's no space between my stitches here. Like here I had a spacer, here there's no space. So that's why you're seeing them as tall stitches. You're not seeing them pinched together. Down here, what I started doing was I started working a, let me turn it this way. I started working a single crochet in between each big one. So I worked a big stitch and then a single crochet and then a big stitch and then a single crochet. And now you can see how they formed the little loops that I'm actually gonna be braiding together. So either way is good. You can space them out or you can put them one right after another. But this is a way to do a horizontal Jacob's Ladder where it goes across the row by using tall stitches. So both of those are crochet. You can do the same kind of things in knitting. Here I have a knit swatch where I've done the same sort of thing of making these loops in a background of just garter stitch. So whenever I got to where I wanted a loop, I just, I knit, I knit it nine times. That, that stitch, I knit it, and then I put the left needle back in and knit it again. Put the left needle back in, knit it again. Nine times to make this big long loop and then I went on and knit the rest of the row. So these loops are bigger, they're gonna make a puffier um, ladder than even this one is. Um, and that's, and I did that on every alternate row as well, so that's spaced out one every two rows. So you can do it in knitting, you can do it in crochet. I'll talk a little more about other variations after I show you how to form the ladders. Let's form this basic crochet ladder first. Now in most cases when you do Jacob's Ladders, the instructions are going to tell you to twist your first loop and only your first loop. The reason for that is if you don't twist it, you'll end up with this big open space at the bottom. To close that loop, we're going to twist it. And you can go either direction. You probably wanna be consistent across a product project, but we're going to twist our loop to just close up that gap at the bottom just for the first loop, okay? Just like that. Now we're going to take the next loop, the next loop in the series, and we're gonna pull it through this loop. It's just like making a chain. So you pull it through this loop, and that's going to secure that first loop. See that? That's secured the first loop. And now we're working with the next loop. Okay, and you don't have to use your fingers. I'll show you one more time with my fingers and then I'll show you with a crochet hook because you can do it with a crochet hook. So I'm opening up this loop nice and big. I'm pulling the next loop through it and then pulling it out, right? So now I've formed another loop and I'm gonna keep doing that. If you have a nice big chunky crochet hook, that works really well. You can insert your hook into the loop and it's just chaining, you guys. Grab the next loop, pull it through. Grab the next loop, pull it through. 
and I'm just making this chain as I go. Grab the next loop, pull it through. Grab the next loop, pull it through. All the way up the ladder. I've reached the top and now I have this last loop left, right? How do I secure this last loop? Well, for right now, I'm just going to put a stitch marker in it to hold it in place. And I can either use a big enough stitch marker that it's not going to be able to pull through easily, or I can clip it to the stitches behind it so that it can't pull out. The goal right now is just to keep it from pulling out. Later, I'm going to come back and work the next row of stitches. And when I get to here, I'm going to go ahead and put a slip stitch into that to hold it in place. And that's it. That'll hold it in place. Now your pattern may call for something else. You'll work some other stitch into it. Doesn't matter. Um, and if I didn't want to work more stitches, I could even just sew this down. But you do need to do something to tack that last loop into place. In this case, I'm going to be working a row of stitches and then working a slip stitch in there and then go on and work the rest of my stitches. And that's it. That's how I would tack that down. Let's look at the horizontal ladder. I used a ladder like this for a bracelet pattern I did um, called Jacob and Julia. So the fun part about this is that it's so wide, right? When I'm done with this ladder, you're not gonna see the other stitches at all. It's gonna cinch in like this and everything else will hide behind it. So I'm twisting that first loop, right? And I'm gonna use the hook because it's a little hard with nails. I'm twisting that first loop and then I'm pulling the next loop through. A little fiddly on the first one. There we go, pulled through. Now I'm just gonna keep going and grab each of these stitches and pulling it through just like I did before. How you make the loops doesn't matter to how you form the ladder. The ladder is just a chain. It's a chain made with loops. So I'm pulling these through. I'm just making a chain with my loops. And now here I've got to the point where the loops are more defined because I did this um, single crochets in between. So I'm going to pop those to the side I want them on and just pull it through. Pop it to where I want it and pull it through. And you'll see the difference in the ladder where I have a row in between. I'll show you that once I get the ladder finished here. Whoop. Where's that last one? Pop it through. Okay, grab it. All right. Now you can see in this one, look at how much bigger and puffier the chains are here, the loops are here, than they are here. And that's because here I had a loop every row, or every stitch, and here I only had a loop every other stitch because I did a single crochet in between. So these are more defined and longer, whereas these are squished up on each other a little bit more, and so they're fatter. Um, so you can get different shapes and textures in your Jacob's Ladder based on how you space out your loops and how big of loops you use. So let me go ahead and show you how I would end this one here. To secure this one, for example, something I could do would be just to work a single crochet in the top, slip stitch into this loop, and then work a single crochet into the bottom. And now it's secured. So that's all you really need to do to secure your ladder, but you do need to secure that last loop somehow. So that is a horizontal crocheted Jacob's Ladder. Let's look at the knit one, and you can tell it works in the same way. I'm gonna take this first loop and twist it, right? And then I'm just gonna pull the rest of these loops through. In knitting, the loops are slightly twisted already just because of the way the knit stitches work. Um, so it'll be a slightly different look, but and you wanna be consistent in how you're pulling them through. But there we go, there is my knit Jacob's Ladder. I would probably knit another maybe two or three rows at least of plain garter stitch before trying to connect this one. And when I was ready to connect it, what I would do is just slip it onto my left needle and knit it along with the other stitch behind it, like knit it along with that stitch so that it just secures it to that stitch just like that. So that's how you form the Jacob's Ladders. Now you can do other things besides straight lines as well. Suppose you had a loop here, a loop here, a loop here, a loop here, a loop here. You could do a diagonal line across, right? 
If you went this way, this way, this way, this way, that way, that way, that way, that way, you could do zigzags, you could do curves, you can make any shape that you want based on where you position those loops. You're basically making a chain on the surface of your fabric, which you can make in any direction you want to make, okay? Just by how you place the loops. You can also do cables. I have a blanket pattern I did for a magazine where I did two sets of loops, or it might even have been three sets of loops, but multiple sets of loops right next to each other. So it was like chain seven, single crochet, chain seven, single crochet, chain seven, single crochet. So two or three sets of loops right next to each other. And then I twisted them over each other like this to form a twisted cable. So lots of different things you can do with Jacob's Ladders, but this is the basics of how you, form the ladders in both knitting and crochet. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, or leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos. Thanks for watching.